I'm Scott and welcome back to Home Improvement Woodworking. I'm hoping we don't have to cancel Halloween this year because of COVID-19. I've got a solution that will help keep you socially distanced and safe while handing out candy to your neighborhood children and keeping them safe as well. So stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to build this project. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. I'm making this project using plastic yeast troughing. It's dark on the outside and white on the inside, and I'm going to line it with TikTok lights, and that'll really jazz it up. I think the kids will find this exciting because it's like a Hot Wheels track. Drop the candy in the top, you can see it sliding down into the bag at the bottom. The most difficult part of this project is building stands for it, so I'm going to be building some wooden stands in the workshop, and I'm going to show you how that's done. But I think this is a good solution in terms of how to be socially distanced, and we can still enjoy our Halloween. To make this project as simple as possible, I'm going to use just a handsaw and a drill. If you've got a driver, that would make things easier, but a screwdriver will work too. Now for material, I'm using just some scrap lumber that's left over in my workshop. Um, after I build this, I'll put the detailed dimensions in the video description. So if you want to reproduce this, you've got the measurements there. Now for material, I've got some one by material here, uh, just some scrap pine and some ash. Here I've got a two by four. And the reason I want a two by four, I'm going to be using this on the base, is so that when I attach the upright, I can put two screws in here and it will prevent it from moving this way. So that way it's stable. And I've got some 2x2 uh, two two here as well. You could use 2x2s two for uprights if you want. Now if you're looking to save money on this project and you don't want to go out and purchase lumber, what you can do is get an old skid and use the material from that for your project. All of this is going to get painted black, so no one's really going to see it. That's why I've got miscellaneous scrap lumber here. So let's get to it. I need to create two bases. One's going to be for above the stairs, at the top of the stairs. I'm going to build an X for the base to make it stable for the upright. And at the bottom of the stairs, I'm going to make a T to make efficient use of the material. Um, I only need support three directions because the step at the bottom will help the other side. So the first thing is to measure out the wood and then cut it with a handsaw. So I'm going to measure 12 inches and this will be my cut line. And then what you want to do is draw a line across there so you can cut a straight line. Now I'm using a square. This is a typical woodworking tool. But if you don't have a square, most saws are fairly accurate in terms of being 90 degrees. You can see this one's off a little bit. But if you use this part here, that'll get you pretty close to square. Now one of the mistakes people make when they try to cut wood is they don't clamp it down. And what's happening is there's force going this way, pushing the board this way and then you're trying to hold it still, moving it back and forth, you're getting all kinds of binding and twisting action. It's very difficult. So clamp it down if you've got some clamps, have someone hold it down if you don't. But the easiest way to do it is to have a bench hook. This is just a board with a piece on the front here, and I just slide it onto my workbench, and it's got an edge at the back here. So all I need to do is hold the pressure here, and as I'm cutting, the cutting happens this way. It's perfectly stable and it's not going to move. Regardless of how you hold it down, the way you want to cut to a clean line here is you're going to use your thumb. And the thumb is resting just above the surface of the material and it's going to guide the saw. So what you're doing is this. It's a bit like playing pool. Um, you're using this to guide the saw. Just stay away from the teeth. So put it where you want it and guide it backwards. And you're going to pull it back a few times to start to make a groove exactly where you want it. And you don't need to force the saw. You don't need to push it. It's just a matter of getting a groove there. So what that does is it gives you a channel now that you can start sawing. The saw cuts on the push. So now I can get in the groove and start pushing. And then as I cut further down here, I want to make sure that my cut line is staying on the side of that pencil line. So you see there? The other tip I've got for you is how to hold a saw. 
You want to hold a saw with your finger pointing forward. And what that does is it prevents the saw from moving back and forth like this. If you're just holding it like this, it tends to want to move on you. So point your finger forward, you'll be good to go. The way these go together is I'm going to make a T here and I'm going to drill a pilot hole through here and put a screw in on the top and the bottom and then I'll give a T. For the X, what I'm going to do is the same process. Put a screw in there, top and bottom, and then I have to off-center this a little bit to be able to get the screw in there. So the X will be for the top of the stairs, the T will be for the bottom. I'm using two drill bits for this. The first one is to drill the pilot hole, and that's wide enough that the screw can get in and still grab with the threads. So I'll drill that in, and in order to get this through here clearer, this is a 9 64ths, and this is a 3 16 This one just goes through this first 2x4, and it allows the screw to go in without any friction, and allows you to get a nice tight joint. So here you can see that goes in nice and easy. It's going to save you some elbow grease too. So you just need to line up that hole and then you can screw it in. Now, as I mentioned before, if you've got a driver, it's going to make your job much easier. So on the second side here, I have to leave room for the drill to be able to get in there. And I can pre-drill my holes. Well, I guess you can say we got our bases covered. Here I've got the upright and it's going in the same way. Pre-drill two holes, put in two screws, and we'll have a nice solid base and upright. I'm using some leftover paint from a previous project on these just to cover them up, make them appear darker. I don't really care what the finish looks like. It's going to be dark outside anyway, but I just don't want this looking like white bare wood. So I'll slather this on and then we can move on to the next step. Now I wanted to have a little fun with this, so I thought I'd make a sign. This is going to say candy slide and I've made it out of foam core. What I've done is cut it out in this shape and then painted it with an orange tempera paint. And then I just printed out some letters on the printer. This is a 250 point font. So I've cut these out and I'm just gluing them on. The east drop is here, also known as a gutter. And I've got the LED lights here. So this is just a set for a TV, um, but these are commonly known as TikTok lights because they're used in TikTok videos. So I'll plug it in here and we'll see what they look like. It comes with a remote, so we'll turn it on. It's got different settings, flash, strobe. Maybe we can change the speed of them. There's a fade. So we've got lots of options. And my plan here is, this has an adhesive back, is to put it on the inside of the east trough where I've got this flat side here. The shape of the east drop is flat here and it comes out and it bumps up and there's a nice flat spot there. So I'm gonna mount the lights up there. And I think I'm gonna pitch it a bit like this so the lights are gonna shine down and this will be sort of the valley where the candy will travel. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna cut this off on a bit of an angle just to make this more like a shoot at the bottom so it makes it easier for the kids to see the candy coming down. So this is going to be the bottom and it's going to be mounted on an angle. So I'm just going to create a gentle curve here on both sides um, so that the bottom part sticks out more. It'll make sense once I get this mounted. 
and I'm just using a heavy duty pair of scissors here to do this. The plastic isn't too tough. So it's that easy. I'm putting the strip starting down here so that the electrical cord is at the top. The parts are all ready to assemble, but we're just missing one thing, the candy. You might not recognize some of these if you're not Canadian. We've got Coffee Crisp, we've got Kit Kat, and Smarties. These are a little bit like M&Ms. So I'll take these outside with all the parts and we'll start testing this out. The sun's just setting out here and you might hear the geese flying overhead. So it's perfect timing to do this. I've got two spring clamps just to hold everything together and I can figure out how long this e drop needs to be. So I've got my two stands here. Clamp this on here. And then this one up here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This is the right height for a child. So let's give it a try. Open up the box here. We got a coffee crisp. Perfect. Now, let's try the lights. So I'll plug these in on up here. And we'll give them a try. Woohoo! That looks pretty good. Let's try it with the lights off. Well, that looks pretty good. We'll put a bit of flash in there. Maybe that's a little too much flash. Okay, let's try that again. Perfect. Okay, so this is telling me that up here, as an adult putting candy in, right where this cord ends is where I can cut this off. We've got at least six and a half feet of length here. So a good social distance from the children and it's an easy way to get the candy down to them. Well, it's getting really dark out here. I'm gonna take all these parts inside and I'll bring them out tomorrow in the daylight so you can see how this gets fastened together. We'll bring out the candy slide sign and we'll get it all set up and you can take a look. Now that we have better lighting, I'll show you how this goes together and we'll put up the sign too. I'll start by drilling a hole in here. And then what I can do is install a screw. With one screw installed here and one at the top, I can now adjust the legs so they're perfectly up and down. And then I can install the second screw because it's a little bit wobbly right now. But once I put that second screw in, it'll really make it more solid. So I've angled this from the stairs so the stairs are blocked off and I put up the candy slide sign here so that the kids don't come up the stairs. Now I do have a solar light here that I'm going to put down here to light this up as well as the light in here. So I think the kids are really going to enjoy this. I'm hoping that this gives us a nice safe environment that we can trick or treat this year. And it's still a few weeks before Halloween so I guess we can buy another box. Yeah. If you enjoy home improvement videos or want to learn about woodworking, you can subscribe by clicking over here, clicking on the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop. Mm. These are really good.